Hey everyone, Daniel Marchena here from xdadevelopers.com and XDA TV, and today we're showing off the Android Q Beta 1 running on a Google Pixel 3. Now, I've already enrolled this particular device in the Android Q Beta, which is available, and the link will be in the description to xdadevelopers.com, where you can go ahead and see how to get this installed on your particular device. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on Wi-Fi on my phone, and uh, you'll get a notification letting you know that the update is ready once you've enrolled in the beta and a few minutes have passed. Uh, it's a 1300 megabyte for the Google Pixel 3 to go from the March update of Pi to the first beta of Android Q. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and let this download and install and see what Google's added, what Google's removed, and what Google has hidden in the new Android Q Beta 1. All right, so here we are. The Android Q Beta 1 is now installed and running on my Google Pixel 3. And uh, so let's go ahead and go through some of the changes that uh, we've noticed with this. So starting out with the uh, the first thing you probably see here is uh, down here is this uh, record Q video. So those are your at a glance notifications. Uh, now they used to appear up here on your home screen, uh, but now they're showing up down there. And what's also pretty cool too is uh, they show when you're always on display as well. You can kind of see that faintly down there uh, that those uh, notifications are now going to appear as well there, which is pretty neat. I, I like that, especially on the always on display mode. Uh, so going ahead and unlocking the device, I'll go ahead and unlock it there. I've got my fingerprint logged in. And again, you still do have your you know, at a glance notifications up here in the top pane. Uh, so again, a, a lot of things really haven't changed from Android Pie, but we'll go through some of the things that we have noticed that have adjusted. Uh, and if it sounds like I'm going off a checklist here, I kind of am. I've got a list of things that have changed there that I want to make sure we go over uh, and not take too much time in this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the privacy update. We discussed this a lot in our last video uh, about the leak is Android's new notifications for location use and the such. So we're going to go over here and uh, I am going to revoke Dark Sky's ability to have my location. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and deny that there. We're going to go ahead and open up the application. And you'll see that you get this new application, this new notification here. And you can see we allow all the time, allow only while the app is in use, deny it or deny and don't ask again. Uh, the bottom one doesn't appear for the first time you allow it. So my guess is you have to deny it one time. And then when you come back in, if it asks you again, then that prompt will be up there. So this is really cool and, and really nifty. It's a lot like uh, iOS's notifications for location use where you can just have something utilize it in the background. So that, that's a really nifty little feature there. And all of the notifications for uh, private security access or permission access, sorry, are done that way as well, including uh, access to, you know, right to the system, uh, access to your camera, so on and so forth, uh, all show up that way. Uh, in this screen here, we saw the new version of the app info screen. Uh, you know, it's just kind of redesigned a little bit. There isn't a whole lot of new information or details here. But it just looks a little bit nicer than it used to look to look in the past. Uh, now, one thing I am really disappointed of in this build, we're going to go ahead and open up the uh, the open camera here. And if you remember in the last beta build that we were running, uh, while the camera was in use or the microphone or location, you would get a notification here as well as a new notification in the shade, letting you know something was using your, you know, was accessing this information. Uh, as of right now, it looks like that has been removed in this particular build of Android Q. Uh, I'm hoping that is something that comes back. We haven't been able to find it yet, but it's something that I wanted to notice. It's, I really hope Google reintroduces that for the Pixel devices because it was a really nice feature to have. Uh, you know, Google's definitely going to be holding back some things for the new Pixel devices. So that might be one of those things. I, you know, I, I can't imagine them getting rid of that. It was really, really nice to have. Uh, so continuing down the list here, uh, I can't really show this off because I'm not too sure how to get it to show off. But if you're in an application that needs to say turn on Wi-Fi, uh, the application can now show a slice of the setting down here, allowing you to turn on Wi-Fi without it having to redirect to the other application. So uh, imagine setting up your wireless uh, cameras or doorbell uh, or connecting to a camera wirelessly, uh, you know, those things could now show up in the application without having to leave it. Just kind of make things a little bit more seamless. Uh, so now when the uh, the display is off, if you double tap the display, uh, it'll bring you straight to the lock screen instead of bringing you to the always on display. I have always on display on, so I can't really demonstrate that here, but that's just something that they've adjusted and changed there. 
Uh, one thing as well, you know, the, the battery time is now located in the top right corner instead of the bottom center. I'm not sure why they moved that. I actually liked it a lot more down on the bottom, but you know, that's Google's changing things for the sake of changing a, a new lock icon down there. And also on the pin pad, you've got some color uh, that they've added. Again, changes just for the sake of changing. Uh, so going deep into the, uh, the battery settings here, this is where we're going to notice some changes uh, compared to Android Pie. So in the battery, everything looks fairly simple, uh, and it's actually a lot cleaner than it used to be. You noticed, uh, I mentioned in the last video that I put out how clean the UI is going from top to bottom. It just all flows together. Um, Battery Saver now has an extra setting in here. We're going to go in here and uh, you'll see there set a schedule, no schedule. So you don't just have the ability to turn it on based on, you know, it gets below 10%. It'll actually turn on based on your routine. So if it detects that based on your usage, the battery is going to run out before you normally charge it, maybe before bed or when you get home, it can automatically turn on that mode. And that's going to take some time to test and really see how well that works uh, in order to go ahead and test that out. Uh, another thing here, this battery in information. You'll see here uh, that I have the battery percentage up here like normal, but when I swipe it down, it now shows me when uh, my battery is expected to turn off at 3 p.m. tomorrow. I don't use this too much, so it's you know just giving false information there. But again, that's really neat to have. Uh, but you do have to have the battery percentage in the notification pull down uh, in order to enable that. And once it's enabled, it'll go ahead and display that for you there. I, I couldn't get it to show up until I toggled that. Uh, so it's just kind of a, a little thing there. Uh, battery saver again, uh, you know, we mentioned uh, in our last video that we found a full dark mode running on, uh, you know, on Android Q. Uh, it looks like Google has removed that from at least the user facing area for the time being. You can still turn it on by turning on battery saver. We'll tur still turn on this pure dark mode uh, here on the phone. Again, it looks really nice, but you have the side effects of having battery saver on. Now, if you go over to xcadevelopers.com, uh, Michelle has the ADB commands. You can key in there to go ahead and toggle your uh, your uh, dark mode without having to turn on battery saver. So that way you can keep things like full CPU performance and animations without having any problems there. Uh, another thing that uh, Android Q is offering here, we found that there is a desktop mode. Um, it's still quite broken and because the pixels can't do HDMI out, we really can't test it outside of an emulator. So go to the portal, check out the article there that Michelle has. He has some pictures uh, of the uh, desktop mode running on it. You can run it somewhat on the pixel by enabling flags and changing DPIs, but again, I'm not gonna go through that much, uh, you know, to go ahead and show off kind of a broken feature at this point. Uh, so going down here, uh, one thing that I noticed is a new animation when opening applications. You can kind of see it, it, it springs out and shows the curved corners. Uh, I'm not a fan of that notification at all. It, it kind of feels like something that is from an, a third-party OEM uh, and not a baked-in feature of Android, to be completely honest. But again, it's just a, a change. And Google will be changing some of these things as we're watching this and as we're going through the beta program. There's going to be six Android Q betas. Um, I would expect other devices to be included around the third beta, which would uh, be the second one from now, uh, as that one is right around Google I.O. So I would expect Google to announce, you know, partners for the beta program. And hey, here's the beta for these devices, uh, kind of like they did at the last I.O. So continuing down here, um, notches and screen corners now show up in... Uh, screenshots. So you can actually see it right there. Um, it, my personal opinion is uh, it can't really see it because I do have a, you know, there we go. You can see it when I uh, pull that up, that bottom corner there. Uh, and on the Pixel 3, it shows a massive notch at the top. Um, personally, I think that's a bug. I don't think that was intended, but we'll have to see when Q goes finalized, uh, whether or not that, uh, you know, will actually stick around. So here's another chance to talk about another uh, kind of... Um, this is a very controversial change. Uh, you can no longer dismiss notifications by swiping to the left. Uh, you have to swipe to the right in order to dismiss notifications. Uh, so that's going to change, uh, you know, just a, a change of how we use our phones. I'm, I'm not sure why Google's changing that, but again, that's something that, uh, you know, they're going ahead and changing. So while we continue here, uh, some design apps or apps got new designs, new material designs. One of those is the files application. Just has a fresh coat of paint, looks a little bit nicer there. Um, the application for third-party installs uh, is a little bit different as well. So I'm gonna go ahead here and allow from this source. And you'll see here that it's all remaining in this small screen without going full screen anymore. This is kind of like you used to see on the tablets. Uh, so that's really cool to see there. 
certain applications, depending on their SDK targeting, will actually show the permissions that they're requesting and allow you to deny them while you're installing them. So that's a, a pretty neat feature there uh, that some applications will be able to go ahead and use. Uh, on the home screen, we have some new tweaks. So say I don't want Fortnite up here, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this icon. Oops, I didn't mean to remove that. I can go ahead and undo that, and it goes back to the same location where it once was. I'll move that over here, remove it, and then I can go ahead and undo. I'm kind of surprised that a lot of more uh, third-party home launchers don't have this kind of a feature because it's really nifty. Uh, and I'm glad Google's implemented that because, it, again, it is pretty cool there to have that kind of a feature. So now we're going to go ahead and dive into the developer settings where we'll see some changes. Uh, so I already have that enabled. Again, you can enable that by clicking the build number and about phone um, a bunch of times and it'll pop up there for you. So we're going to scroll through here. Uh, trust agents extending unlocked uh, lock screen when trust is lost. We discussed that in one of our videos up on the portal. So make sure you go ahead and check that out. It relates to how the device stays unlocked when uh, you have the permission for other devices to keep it unlocked. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here. And here's some theming. And I'm actually really surprised this made it to the beta. Uh, I don't think we'll see this go beyond beta one, beta two, unless it becomes a fully fledged feature. Uh, but you can actually change your accent color. So you can see the pixel blue up on the top here. If you're running this or if in the future when you run this on like an essential phone, you'll probably have that aqua greenish, really hideous color uh, instead of that blue. Uh, but if we go ahead and change it, you can see it refreshes there and uh, now it's black. And the same thing with my quick setting toggles there. Uh, and I can go ahead and change the font there. And it changes to that really ugly font. Go ahead and change that back as quick as possible. And this was something we demonstrated in our last video uh, that we were able to change using ADB. Uh, so it's pretty cool that they've included that. But again, it's it's odd that Google's left this in here. Um, I, I don't foresee it lasting too much longer unless this is something they're going to allow OEMs to tap into uh, for official theming engines instead of using, you know, everybody doing their own thing. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as black. Again, you can see kind of where it fills in there, the black battery bar now. It's pretty neat that how system-wide it is. But keep in mind, um, you know, this is something that... Um you, this is something only system applications can use at the time. They have to have a signed signature key from the system. Uh, so this isn't something third parties can go ahead and tap into easily uh, for theming on devices that haven't been modified. And speaking about Root, um, the developer behind Magisk uh, came out and said that uh, Root is going to be hard to obtain here initially on Android Q. Now, I definitely believe that they're going to find a way to do it, but he said that it will be a little bit delayed while they try to figure out a new way. Uh, to get root working on this. So definitely follow that, uh, you know, situation there. Follow uh, Michelle from XDA, our, our editor in chief. He's really retweeting and tweeting out everything that he finds pretty interesting. Uh, you know, definitely follow him for pretty much up to date everything that's going on there. So again, we're going to go ahead and go down into the developer settings uh, one more time there. And you'll see the options down here that we were talking about forcing desktop mode and forcing freeform windows. As of right now, on the devices themselves, that doesn't do anything. Uh, but in the future, it is something that, uh, you know, they'll go ahead and do. So another neat feature here that we saw. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Google Play Music. And uh, so I have music, you know, muted, of course, so that way it doesn't show up. Uh, I don't get this video flagged. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And um, so on the always on display there, you can see the uh, the song title and the artist of the music on the always on display. Just displayed newer. I really like the way this looks. And you can see the icon for the particular application that is showing that notification. Now, if you're like me, um, you know, I really like uh, Nirvana's Nevermind album, uh, but when I'm playing it at work and I have a picture of a naked baby in a pool on my lock screen and my manager walks up, it can kind of be awkward. Uh, Android Q seems to have found a middle ground for that. So now they're actually blurring out the background uh, and they're just taking the hint. Uh, we remember that these notifications are built off of hints of the uh, the uh, album cover, and uh, now they're doing that for the lock screen as well, hinting that and blurring it out a lot. So you kind of get that feel that you know something's playing, but you're not actually getting that static image. And that's something I really enjoy because on on Android Pie, if you were watching a YouTube video or something, you had like a massive zoomed in thumbnail, and you know when you go from 16 by 9 to 4 by you know, or 18 by 9 for a thumbnail, it, it just looks really weird on, on this screen. It was always pixelated and blurred out and stuff. So I really like that change. God, swiping to the other side is really annoying. Uh, I really like the change that uh, Google went ahead and made there. So 
The last thing I wanted to talk about here today on uh, Android Q is the redesigned share sheet. So if I go ahead and get a link here, and uh, if I can grab one. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and grab the link and I click share. And see how much faster that popped up there with the uh, recommended, the applications that are down here. And then of course, uh, the new addition is the link up here. So if I have the link there, I can just go ahead and copy the text. And that works for a lot of different text uh, that you can go ahead and share and just copy it straight to the clipboard uh, as a, uh, a quick design element. So it's a really nice addition that they've done there, fixing the share sheet uh, in some way, shape or form. And another little thing here that we noticed is you can now swipe from anywhere on the bottom of the screen uh, to go ahead and access your recently used applications. Uh, so that's pretty much it here for our first look at Android Q. Uh, this is a, a really good beta. Uh, you know, it's really awesome to see that they are bringing it back three generations all the way back to the original Pixel. Uh, I know a lot of original Pixel users are very happy uh, that that is um, I am now there for them. And actually, while we're doing that, I got another little tweak that they made uh, showing up here. You see the tiny little bell next to the settings button or settings text? Uh, that's actually showing you the uh, a notification that recently made noise on your phone. So that'll go away after a few moments. And I think after it, it goes away after like a minute or two, uh, it'll disappear there from the screen, just showing you. It, personally, that's not something that benefits me or that I would really use. But for people who have tons of notifications on their, on their screen, uh, you know, that's really nifty and you can see that actually just disappeared there, uh, you know, to see which ones made a sound, um, you know, I guess that's something a lot of people would use. And then also we've got this manage button down here uh, that can show you your most recent notifications and adjust them as well, you know, adjust per uh, application or just block the entire application. So that's a really neat way as well. Again, just making things faster uh, is pretty much what Android Q is about, privacy and making things a little bit more convenient, except for swiping away notifications. Uh, so we will definitely have more videos about Android Q coming up here on the future. There's going to be a lot of articles there on the portal, so be sure to follow us at xdadevelopers.com and our at XDA Developers Twitter account. And if you're not yet subscribed to XDA TV, be sure to go ahead and do that and turn on the notification bell so you can get notified of every single one of our videos that we go ahead and put up here on the channel. Uh, leave us a like if you've enjoyed this video as it does help and talk in the comments. Let us know what your favorite features that you've seen from Android QR and uh, when you think uh, it's going to be coming to your device or what devices do you think will be involved in the beta. So get that uh, conversation started down there in the comments. Again, I'm Daniel Marchena for XDA TV, and I'll see you in the next one.